All righty. One of the first two. You want to um, you want to do uh, give me share screen sharing permissions or whatever, or do I have sure. it? Sure. Oh man, my uh, Eric, Eric and I yesterday. He, do you have no idea like what? Can you hear me all right? Does it sound all right? It sounds so much better. Yeah, that's what I figured. The audio is always better in Windows. But anyways, Eric just totally uh, forces me to focus on things completely outside of my normal realm of thinking, but is related um, because part of his interest is uh, providing education at a sort of higher technical level. And so we spent a lot of time talking about what he's working on and going headless with WordPress as a transition to move people off of existing WordPress sites into sort of like a web three direction. And, um, you know, different things that are problematic with WordPress in regards to security and um, whatnot. But anyways, uh, I'm pretty excited, pretty excited because uh, uh, you gave me a lot of focus on um, understanding more, some things that I was missing um, that give me a lot more clarity of like the bigger picture of stuff that I want to do outside of EOS, which believe hey, me, I have. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Can you hear me? Who's Eric? Oh, wow, Eric. There. No, Eric is the uh, the guy that I. He's in our group. He's Erigo. Erigo is Eric, the um, the guy I mentioned to you before. He's on the Notion list. <laughs> Are you talking about Oscar or? Uh, no, or, no, my uh, coder, my Sean. coding buddy. No. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, because well, good. Oh, yeah, that's that makes sense. He's, right, your, so, he's the guy that is guiding you. Yes, exactly. So I so a lot of times when I get done with my EOS stuff, I go and back and talk to him and fill him in. I told him about Shock Cruise. I you know I tell him about what we got going on. I give him little bits of Dan Larimer's latest this and that. And so he's not really Hey, active. I went back and forth with that homeboy that made those perfect little signs that were uh, fundamentally speaking to uh Yeah. uh, uh Marco uh, sortition. Uh yeah. it was Marco. Uh, it was uh, Oh no, 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 that was Nuno. Nuno. Sure. So Nuno, that's right. And uh, uh, and his uh, handle was like Nudamar or whatever. And right, I always right. loved seeing him forever. But I spoke, I zoomed with him on like Sunday, and uh, we went deep uh, for about uh, yeah. forty five minutes to an hour on the uh, the, the principles and fundamentals of his symbiological interests, and 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 as it, really, as it kind of lines up with the. Uh, the arc, oh, not the archetype, but you get the idea. The architectural framework that Laram has been putting forward with regards to human coordination is wonderful. And I put yeah. three links on this on our on our on our translation foundation site, I, or, or on my site, one or the other. I put those links in there to to uh, chapters go straight to the chapter that would say exactly on sortition or randomness, and straight to the chapter on the uh, the uh, second one, and straight to the chapter on on the. Uh, the third one, which would be in anti fragility, because it's all in that book. I can't wait to circle back with uh, Brandon Lovejoy and say, "Oh my God!" After a year, we actually did something like on what we need to and I talk about snippets, tiny little dense captions. But uh, I want to know from you about that meeting uh, yesterday with uh, with on that uh, that that really sort of brilliant proposal or, or brilliant move to speak to the ENF. You know uh, about uh, really uh, to speak to speak to the fractally project, but as it relates to like connecting people with what the ENF wants, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't read his. I, I got down to maybe like page four, or whatever it was, and, and out of a lot of pages, I think that I say, okay, I think I I got something, and then two days, four days later, we we have this Tuesday kind of like just get get me in the room and uh we kind of did it uh because uh i didn't have any availability and uh no one knew that but at the same time we we were able to kind of portal in and uh jess jesse was was explaining it, uh going top to 
bottom to, to try to bring us up for what we needed. And I, I didn't get what I wanted. So my goal was to this week sometime return to that original paper he gave me and then go, all right, is it more than what I originally understood? Because all I understood it as was a straw man. It's way too complicated to be anything other than a straw man. Well, because well, it's not, it, I, the, I, agree, I think that if this thing is going to really work and if we want it to work or work best or whatever could come out of this, we need to just get the idea out in front of more people. You got, that's well, the way I look at it. Uh, okay, you know, that, that can, so, so did you hear me speak to what I was thinking about? Well, thank you for the first step on just throwing these these conceptual no I, I really just... loved i really loved your early feedback because what you did is you gave a space for it to be okay if it's not perfect or if there's things to, that need to be worked out but if it is you know let's go with it but see the fact is is that i personally don't feel that all of us in there in that meeting are qualified enough to have a certain conclusion over if this is going to work and that's me coming from my uneducated background but that's my gut and let sense. me let, let and me I say feel like uh, we need to get people higher than us to evaluate this and really critique so, so here's and i think we're in transition say with specific jesse is in transition uh turning himself from a uh from a boy into a subject matter expert and deep deep leader of the of a larger kind of body uh, a, a larger kind of scoped uh organized uh interest and execution see he's he's beautiful he's been here for like he's been he's been engaged in in these in these kind of major like stage functions of eden and uh, practically since the onset and it's given him ability to have legs and, yeah and, and 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 grow into this like and, and the language translation aspect gives him a pulse on the whole community you know because because the different regions have different like you know like for example eos costa rica you know, the Spanish speaking, there's different kinds of a value that the different regions like for versus Chinese versus Korea. Versus yeah. Like and, and, and that's why I couldn't believe it. He's talking like uh, he's actually putting out a version 0.1 message that speaks to what we all are talking about. And that is the organizational by language. Um, like like faculty, Dan Lammer yeah. has using is using organizational by by language as a fundamental pillar of it's like a gate to a community. If you don't speak English, he has a really hard time, and so so we're like we got these huge separations of communities that we want, of course, to increase the bandwidth of. But Jesse is saying, oh no 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 no, and this is an original idea. He he's coming to the table architecturally and says since he's tying in the the, the uh, tokenization to the language <laughs> with these liquidity pools a <laughs> uh, 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 shared help your brother i'm not into altruism but i understood what he was saying and the larger gesture is yes we will fund our brother uh, our sister organization our sister language group of the same of the same exact thing so, so if if I so as on a native level, I could choose: Do I want the US Translation Foundation practically team to so and so to be cross lingual to include at minimum these three these languages? I would say, I'm not even thinking about that. Yes, I would, and I will give up a two thirds of our money to go boom and boom to Korea and China, and I'll take the last third. I, I, I take I'll take those those three, and I'll make those four instead. I'll, I'll keep a quarter, give a quarter, a quarter, and then give the last quarter to all that string of other languages as a, through the Chinese, English, and Korean portals. And he was talking about you can get to Bulgarian if you do. You, do, you, do you follow what I'm saying? Because they, he got asked, can you can you go to the long string of languages? And he said, yes, you can, but you'd have to go through one of those three further. Hey, uh, yeah. I just want to let you know something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Mark. Uh, Marco, uh, uh, crypto writer, uh, e, uh, e writer.io or whatever. So um, <laughs> listen to, I, so he says, I won't, I expect to be less active. Um, I, as for me, I need to pick up some money somewhere. So if you know anybody who needs some work, that I'd love to hear about. Now, he's one of the most prolific and quality content producers historically with his EOS Weekly, right? And then listen to this, I write, 
Did you hear about the three prime fractals latest proposal? Starting at 100 EOS weekly for attending fractally meetings. See, I'm just selling, pitching it down to condensed simple version. I'm very eager to, oh, and I mentioned about this resolution with Bywire, which there, I guess there is no problem, but he was worried. I guess there's nothing he wanted to worry about. But anyways, uh, he goes, well, what he doesn't, he's like, Prime Fractal's latest proposal. No, I haven't heard of it. Okay, this is our writer. Okay, he hasn't heard of it. And and so he's asking about it, and I send him some information. Did you send him the paper? Uh, I did not, but I should. But now he's saying well, Jesse, so, Jesse gave me permission. Jesse gave me permission to share it. So. Okay, so uh, it was Jesse Jaffe that wrote in the proposal to clarify the proposal would go to the E and F. And yeah, I got the fractal primes. By the way, do you have Jesse's Telegram? Hey, you may want to reach out to uh, Jesse before you share it to the media because he might be like, "Well, sharing it one thing, not, sharing it." <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I, I didn't. Well, you know, the thing is, the way I look at it, it's on MindWeb. It's in, in public view. You know, it's meant to be. You get what I'm saying? If the link's there, then, you know, that's anyone that goes into it. Pretty good argument. Right. And so, I mean, that's it. That's the intent. If it's released that way, then it's for public dissemination is the way I look at it. And um, so what yeah, basically is happening now, he's, he's asking me for Jesse's telegram because he's saying, He's not responding to. So the thing is, is that like what I'm doing is I'm like right now, I haven't really been, I'm not worried about the public dissemination. I mean, I'll just, I'll share things on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, but I'm like thinking more calculated of the individual particulars of people that I'm interacting with and, you know, just feeding them bits in here, here and there. Yeah, it's great. That's great. Hey, what's the 100 EOS for, for uh, uh, attending fractal meetings? What does that mean? What's the what? You said 100 EOS. What did you mean by that? Oh, because the, the, the three prime fractals proposal, that was the weekly allotment for uh, for meaning or the phase, the first phase. You know what I'm talking about? The five months, remember? No, I don't. You'd have to. Oh, did you, were you at the meeting? <laughs> Where's, let's get yeah. the paper open. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I came in seven minutes late. But you stayed, how late did you stay till? Uh, I think one hour. Yeah, okay. yeah, after 53 minutes. Let me... See, here's Fractally on EOS. Is it this one? Well, this is why I wanted to talk to you about this, because I wanted you to fill in the blank. And well, this is my me. understanding. Hey, did you hear what happened? Did you catch what happened with uh, Jing? Of the um, you, the uh, port thing? Uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, I, I I kind of I know that uh, it's just it's just on the Chinese side. It's not the it's, port uh, that I thought it was. I thought it was going to be a problem, and it turns out it's just the Chinese passports. Yeah, they have some uh, hash fixed hash in there that they had to whitelist. But anyways, uh, it was funny because Jing started asking about it and couldn't get the information. So I I decided to start helping started messaging jing and helping direct jing to the right person and um got that dialogue going but it turned out to be luca who's someone i interact with really early on in my eos um adventures but ludog was sort of in there and uh because basically what i'm finding out is that people don't know how to get in touch with each other and no one takes the time to lead someone to how to do that. And so I did that with Jing of Eden, China, who was basically saying that there was only one passport that worked and then the rest didn't work. And the reason for that was because uh, the first one verified that that prevented the rest from verifying because there was fixed hash because China did not follow the cryptographic standards. They did it the wrong, they did it not according to standards. So they had to sort of reverse engineer and figure out what was wrong with it. But it was sort of funny because um, I don't know. There could have, somebody could have made a better effort to get the more, you know, because basically it was it was the response was they're working on it, they're working on it, and they had been getting that same they're working on it response for ever since I don't know since Palmer closed, and so it was making them concerned because of the the payment uh, would be different if the verified or not. 
Yeah. yeah. So uh, that uh, sounds like kind of business as usual. What stood out was it that you were able to engage with someone who was kind of in a tight spot. Well, because I just wanted to, because uh, I wanted to make sure that there was a, some assurance that this was going to be resolved before this uh, disbursement came, you know, or there was that it was because apparently, you know, it, it was something to where I felt like everyone knew that it was brought to somebody's attention, but there wasn't really any clarity of what exactly was happening. And when you have someone keep asking, you know, and asking, I thought, you know what, let's see if we can figure out what develop who the exact developer is and or what the telegram channel is and whatnot. And so I just took the time to do that. And I think that oh, regardless, okay, okay. regardless yeah. or not, um, it changed anything. It allowed me to develop a relationship of rapport with Eden China Jing, as wow. well as reestablish with Luca. And I had some like personal communication yeah. when I'm on that kind of stuff. And so like a lot oh, of times wow. I'd like to be able to talk to about them about things unrelated you know, to what's going on, just to sort of like, not just be all- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that kind of thing. So okay, thing. well, I can totally relate. Uh, I love that. In fact, uh, funny, I was going to the Bywire uh, uh, news uh, channel that you posted and uh, searching Bywire after I left that channel, I uh, saw, uh, I clicked on the Bywire, but it was Michael Bywire. And I was like, oh yeah. That's not the group I want. That's Michael's direct chat. And it made me think of the same thing where I was like, oh, it's nice. Uh, I, Michael Sullivan is Bywire, basically. He's one of the chief delegates. Yeah. You know what? He, did you know what I. <laughs> Michael, did, I didn't tell you this, I guess, huh? Um, Michael Sullivan is one of the chief delegates. He's also the founder of Bywire. And over the course of the history of Bywire, there's been a number of different directors and shareholders. Some um, have left, but one of the shareholders is LBRY Inc. And LBRY Inc. basically owns and runs Odyssey because Odyssey is based on LBRY technology, which is opposed to IPFS. IPFS is based on... Uh, like IPFS is to EOS as LBRY is to Bitcoin. That's the way I look at it. But anyways, uh, I thought it was interesting because I was trying to figure out who the other shareholders were on his uh, on his board. And um, they all looked like they were sports enthusiasts. Wow. Uh, that's, and so uh, and people in the as sports you, as you will. Huh? Hey, check it out. I said, wow, so take that as you will. Yeah. Hey, whatever. check it out. Did, did you? Well, yeah, there's there's a lot there. Uh, but uh, it's interesting uh, that uh, uh, we have the uh, like kind of the transparency act, uh, transparency function uh, accessible uh, on some level, if not just psychically, to, to consider the idea. Because uh, uh, Elon Musk uh, is so happy to say that. Uh, uh, we will. We shall investigate. Was it was his tweet today? Because uh, the CNN report says uh, that the uh, that there's a huge advertiser coalition that is saying if you release the hold you have on information in the Twitter sphere, we propose to all of us to withdraw our funding as advertisers. Okay, so he says. He says, well, we'll be sure to investigate. And what he implies is. Hello? Uh-oh, you froze up. What he implies is what? That, uh, uh, I don't know what's going on. Basically, trans. Okay, I'll. Can you hear me? Um, you're cutting out. Try to start over. Yeah, that's too bad. Um, yeah, because I was building up toward that idea. So can you still hear, not hear me or can you hear me? I can me? hear you now. I can hear you now. That's great. It sounds like the internet just uh, worked itself out there. But basically, uh, Musk comes over there and says, literally, who funds these organizations? 
that want to control your access to information, question mark. Let's investigate, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> and then he goes over the top and he says, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And then he goes, there is so much potential with Twitter to be the most trusted and broadly inclusive forum in the world. And then he says, that, that is why we must clear out bots, spam and scams, period. Is something actually public opinion or just someone operating 100,000 fake accounts, question mark. Right now, you can't tell. And algorithms must be open source with any human intervention clearly identified. Then trust will be deserved. And I'm over here like this, right here. We're, we're dripping like honey, man. <laughs> Um, what like, was this today see this is the same thing i've been struggling with myself it's like he it sees music to my ears you know <laughs> give it to me right you can talk to me about that all day like you going in on the uh in potential conflicts of interest with regards to our uh our uh our baby, uh, baby media, Bywire is the key media, is one of the key medias. Oh, is oh, right, oh. right. Time out. Did you, did you remember, or did I tell you, or do you know um, that Bywire and NovaCrypt have a NDA? Uh, no, but these are great uh, uh, little nuggets. <laughs> hey, now, keep hey. in mind, hey, re but realize, yeah. go ahead. Well, I'm just what? saying, I'm really good at researching. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, you, your, your point is salient. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you are. Uh, I would uh, speak to that uh, freely outside of your company. Uh, so uh, as far as like the cert goes, uh, it's with me, no question. And, and that, that goes away from, from our, our dialogues. Uh, so I'll say this, uh, that, uh, you know, all data are good in my opinion. And also, um, even NDAs are, are good and, and okay because especially as a fledgling organization like uh, Crypto and Bywire is, so I do also protect that because the last thing I wanted to do was attack Eden uh, without nurturing it first. Because I'm ready uh, to, 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 to harden it, no problem, but I don't want to just cut its knees out. Well, you know, there's a balance. There's a balance. <laughs> yeah. There's a time for That's everything. almost like a story of love. I think you're right. And, and, and the, uh, the idea that uh, that is even driven with a hostile, like, uh, bias and, like, uh, uh, corruptive, like, like, you know what I mean? It's just our, it's our own given motivation, you know, and I'm okay with it. We're just a bunch of wranglers wrangling. <laughs> so, so. It's fair, it's fair game, you know, and uh, but uh, to, to, to spring forward and to like have a, a quick back and forth on, on the subject the way we are is uh, it's kind of a miracle. It's very beautiful to, to self-reflect and to, to consider new ideas like a, uh, like a like a regulator when it comes to a fledgling business. You, you want to be you want to you want to like tighten the screws and also you want to also let them grow. It's like a mother a child or mother and father of a child or something i, I uh right it's like a, maybe a, a real mis weird mystery because the mother and the father are are just in the same situation you know uh and then they're over here going to this kid who's like eh. <laughs> you know they're like two step forward one step back that seems to work for me <laughs> you know? And, you know and, and next thing you know the kid is like kind of learning a new magic trick and and the parents are like oh my god this is amazing. Oh, um, so I have to I tell you, like, I, good, I, good from bad. I call it good from bad. I have a new um, uh, curveball I need to throw at you. I'm, I'm not having necessarily a career change, but addition. <laughs> you know what it is? I decided because I talked to this about about this with uh, Eric. He suggested it. Oh, yeah. He said I'd be good at this, and I researched it, and I thought about it. And I'm like, yeah, this is perfect. This will fit well with EOS. I'm going to focus on being the best technical recruiter on the planet. That's my new goal. Whoa, <laughs> because, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, if you can recruit technicality, you're going to be an extremely valuable dude. 
Yeah. And so I know, I know I started thinking about this. And so it's a beautiful thing because I'm just going to come out there and say, this is my new goal. This is where I'm at. And this is how I'm going to go about it. And I believe I can do this. And wow. you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to all the people in the EOS ecosystem, all the companies and go, Hey, all you, people that need uh, technical recruiting services. I'm interested in doing external technical recruiting. You don't pay me salary or anything, but I need to know what is it that you need and want? What kind of people? What well, kind of I know that whatever. UOS, uh, Helios right. today advertised for, for UOS. For, they want a, a developer. They want an EOSIO developer. But, but you know what the thing is, is you know what I find out is that the best developers, because what ends up happening in the technical recruiting uh, industry is technical recruiters are paid, paid pretty well. A large majority of them want to just make a lot of money. So what they, what they do is they do a lot of spamming and aggressive things to where the, the high-end guys that you really want are used to being headhunted and chased after and get all this spam and often get these uh, matches that don't even fit them or are they're not giving enough scrutiny to because they're just trying to hit like a numbers game. And so what I realized is that I want to differentiate myself where I'm the guy that's really going after the quality people. And at the same time, raising the bar by giving free education to the masses to give them a more of an understanding what kind of skill sets and things they'll need. And if they want to learn what that's like here, here's the free education too, you know, and here's the web links to go to also. Yes. And so, yes. Um, well, Eric and well, I are building you know, an educational yeah, infrastructure, essentially, where we're going to tag team, where I'm going to be more like the entry level, you know, get the topic out there, the basic understanding of what we're talking about. And he's going to be the guy to sort of bring him to the next level, sort of uh, in terms of uh, the technical stuff. We have a lot, lot of varieties of different kinds of subject matter that we have mutual interest in. So it's sort of an interesting deal. And of course, there's a lot of it is technical and related to EOS, but some of it isn't, but there's a, there's a, there's a bigger kind of uh, cultural component in EOS that's missing. It's like this anti-fragile stuff, um, just even the whole history and just like the spirit of what drives the, the EOS community. I think that needs to be captured more and explained more. And one of the things that I've always learned in marketing when it comes to big business, like the way the big boys do it, they don't sell a product product or a service they sell an entire culture they sell a way of doing things it's a whole image and a idea and it's sort of like when you have like a skater or a snowboarder or a surfer it's sort of like the look the way they dress the way they talk the whole culture it's sort of like there's all these things embedded within it that are products and services but it's sort of like creating this notion of, of what this is about and I think that's something that EO, the EOS community lacks and the language that's used and how you attract and identify that is something that um, is a process I think is best done by the community's input, you know, and, and involvement. And I think it's already there, but it just needs to be sort of brought to the table because we have so many great, you know, a talented, creative, uh, multimedia producers i mean even patrick alone the videos he puts together and then you have these people like felix and dan and even doug butner like his girlfriend puts amazing uh videos together uh 3d modeling kind of stuff you know uh chuck too right does chuck do his own work the crypto apologetics robot i don't know um, we might just source it out i don't i don't I, wait, 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 wait. I don't know. Uh, I know two. I know. I know Chuck. Uh, uh, but uh, Chuck uh, McDonald is only Chuck. I know. So who's yeah, Chuck? And uh, I know. I know. I know. Apologist. I know the apologist. Isn't that the same person? Is this he? Uh, am I confused? Okay, hold on. Who does that one? Maybe. Maybe. It, maybe it, it could be. Uh, I. I didn't know that. Uh, crypto apologist has been around forever. Uh, but but he used to like like do a really psychedelic. Uh, news update that was a robot that would be like and yeah sort of all, 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 and it was, it was always anonymous it was always anonymous you know and i was yeah. like yeah that's pretty cool you know what but, In fact, hey, i love his robot back on that one i gotta get a new battery uh basically uh i want to know what that that summary in that meeting i, I was there uh, enough to go okay nice i want to know more i'll start tracking on some levels thank you jesse Okay, I'm sorry. I wanted to know about. Am I? 
but what was the significance of the 100 ERS that was interesting? Oh, but just for me, I'm like, dude, one meeting, one meeting a week, 100 EOS, that's like $200 just to show up to a meeting. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's what I thought you were saying. Uh, I didn't know. Um, that's what I was, is that, that what they said? That. I thought that's what they said. Isn't that what this says? Well, um, I'll, I can like. All right, can you see my screen? Hold on 10 seconds, man. Um, I gotta like resolve something real quick. Um, hey, can I can I talk to you just two seconds? This is my car. It's my car. This is my car. I think someone's like stealing my car right now. I think someone just stole my rental. Stole your what? My rental car. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, okay, okay, no, no, he didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, okay, I, I know what it was, because uh, I was, he was like, he wouldn't roll his window down to talk, but uh, I got it, I got it, I'm so confused. Okay, so, I just came out of a uh, dinner, and I came out going, okay, I'm gonna get back to my rental. You copy, you follow. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out I walked a block from my hotel after being in my rental car, like jumping to this place to place today. So I just ate, I came out, I see my what looks identical to my rental car, like in the second parking space. Right, and, and it's like, a rental car, okay, so this is, know, it's like something you don't see yeah. all the time. Yeah, 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 I don't know. I started taking pictures of him and everything. Like, <laughs> oh my god, you <laughs> are, you're <laughs> oh, that's hilarious! Yeah. I was like, I'll, I'll resolve this later, but for now, let me at least get a picture of this guy like crazy. And oh, then turns out, I'm like, I was like, oh my god, that's my hotel. I walked here. That's right. And uh, so I parked in like the parking garage after I I stopped like driving, but. Uh, that guy is like, no thanks. <laughs> yeah, my phone is getting uh, low on battery, so I had to like blaze. So I have to basically like go back to my hotel and plug in because you know what this all started with is my phone charger cord is actually in my, my rental car. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm going to go out to my car and get my cord. There's my car. It was like the second parking space. I'm like, oh, perfect. There's a dude in there. Um, okay. So um, let's just say this, um, that's excellent. My goal is to read Jesse's paper solid, okay, solid uh, this week and show up Monday. And before that even maybe, maybe, maybe re probably reach out to him a couple of times on like, if, if, if I have anything to offer, I think I might um, because, I want to say this because he's forging something. He's like, 
it's hard to describe. He's forging the way to forge because <laughs> he's entering into the space of like it's getting meta, real meta, because we're like building this container around us. And he's about to fund anybody who's interested. Uh, like, I, I mean, on some level, he's going to begin to open up funding, you know? And see, you don't, you haven't heard this, okay? But Eves LaRose, you know who that is? Yeah. Head of the of PNF. How would yeah, I not good. know? Well, you knew three months, you know? Who knows anybody, anything? I have no idea. But, uh, and but you know, it. I study a lot. So that, that's, a, of course, someone I'm going to come across. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would hope so. He's definitely a guy that, that would be wise to understand where he fits. Because uh, uh, the story of Eves Burroughs, Brandon Bloomer, Dan Larimer, even Zach Gall and others is a complicated one. But basically, uh, Eves looked at the camera about a year ago, or six, nine months ago, and said, anybody who's doing anything for this ecosystem should be funded. Being funded, we just got to... All right, you're cutting out or audio, your picture stopped. No audio, no video. Cannot hear you. I'm uh, getting it together, hang on. You're starting to move I'm again. I'm getting it together, yeah. Thanks. I appreciate the updates. I got, I got, to, I got your message there. But basically, I think you heard all that. He looked straight at the camera. He's the guy with the purse, the real. He's the treasury lead, okay. And he says everybody should be funded if they're doing some shit for this ecosystem. <laughs> so, so Jesse is forging a, a path on how to even move forward. So he's he's really like creating the rules. It's it's really cool. Yeah. And, yeah. and so, so anyway, anyway, I have, I really vibe with his on the level gesture of putting something together that's so hardcore and tying all this together practically and the ENF and, 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 and all these like me mechanics that uh, I would love to have something to say on his proposal. I would love to come next Monday and, and I would love to tie that into 100 EOS sounds high but it also kind of makes sense so i'd love to be able to uh connect those dots enough to feel comfortable about receiving 100 EOS to actually contribute something and go okay okay cool that worked that was interesting because uh they were paying people like a ton of money just for input on those blue papers Um, paused, no audio. Uh, last I heard is something about blue papers, a ton of money in blue papers. Uh, a little movement, no sound. Earth to Mark, uh, Earth man, come in. Hang on just a second. All right, you should be able to hear me. <sighs> yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh, great. And it may have been a little latent. So do you want to, can you see my screen or do you want to see it? I do. I do. You... See right here. <sighs> this is the... Uh... Three prime factals, right? This was from the uh, mind map right here. See, you just click here and that opens this. And then there's your three prime factals proposal. 
How many pages? I can't see a page number. Uh, I'm not on the right page yet. I'll tell you when I yeah, get there. I'll look it up myself. I, I, while you go through it, I'll look it up. All right, right here. here. This is the out. These are the phases. Remember, do you remember this part? Looking. Uh, not, no, no, I don't. Uh, but I, I will. Seven Just, phases. Uh, I don't know if you left before or after this. Seven yeah. phases, okay? Yeah. And I was talking about the math behind these phases, how it starts at 100, goes to 200, 175, 150, 125, and then down to 100. And then, uh, and then I was like, um, I was like, I didn't understand why it went from 100 to 200, then started dropping. So when he when I asked that question, he was explaining the idea is is that uh, um, as the volume of participant goes up and the liquidity increases, the EOS distributed will decrease, but at the same time, the expectation is token price will be going up, and um, so the the value of EOS in relative to like fiat currency or whatever is going to be more. And so that's how that, were you there when Jay Taylor brought in the junk bond concept or whatever? Oh, uh, I, I, I think I left right around that because I do remember this. Now I was only listening. I wasn't watching. That was uh, tricky because so when he started talking this math, like you just said, for example, the curve. Yeah, yeah, because it just sounds like numbers and you can't really remember what the numbers were and and, you know, yeah, that's when I actually chimed in and I said the straw man idea that of hey, you're the one getting something on paper, Jesse. Eves LaRose will fund you just for having a straw man <laughs> and they'll shoot holes in it and they'll say these guys mean okay. something. And so basically what I was saying is this is I go, he was talking about this five month period. He says five months may be too long. Maybe it should be three months, but if it's three months, and so I was like, well, what's the what's the consequence if we shorten it to three months and we have a faster growth rate than we want or vice versa and so i was saying well what you could do is you could shorten it to three months and just reduce the amount of payouts it, like, it, this is this is positively the way to go you need it first of all the number is three months and number two is yes the uh, the, the the values will follow with that and, and, and they'll normalize according to like it's got to just his first uh, step is is fine. Uh, the six five months yes is too long because Eden already discovered this. The Eden well, the delegates reason, are already well, okay. Hold on, the reason he has five months it says the five months thing goes back to the fractally white paper about the five months of the liquidity being locked up in the respect token or something like that. So that's why it had five months here uh yeah uh okay okay well that's that's actually uh uh a little so, bit more sub, sub substantive because they the iraq Brackley team has learned from eden so if they telling this us the five months is the turnaround time well still might not be better than the chief delegates because chief delegates have already determined three months is the number for for, for turning around and reevaluating right now <laughs> my gosh what uh, just all the stuff that i i don't know all the here i'm just gonna this is for i'm just copying and pasting this too this is marcos sending me stuff it's weird dude because like i get i get a very very interesting i don't get a bird's eye view of the whole eos community i get whatever i get you get what i'm saying and what yeah. i get is I because I ask a lot of questions, I knock on a lot of doors, I dig a lot for information, and it leads me towards other, you know, things. And then, you know, certain people get attracted to me and they start talking to me. And uh, it's sort of interesting because, you know, I don't have a completely comprehensive view of the whole ecosystem, but I've penetrated a lot of this, you know, because when you said like Yves and uh, Yves LaRose, you know, who that is, well, I know that Yves, and it's pretty much my understanding, according to the OG EOS clubs group, is that Yves and Zach were the ones who really came together to form the ENF. They don't think very highly of Yves and Zach. And, and Dan Larimer, because see, well, uh, the, the, I guess, yeah. Well, the, well, yes, indeed, because the Chinese uh, uh, block producers 
went with the idea that Dan was already building governance solutions that if we can consolidate around the ENF, then the ENF can hand it over to a, a new propagating like like systems that are built uh, through Dan's vision. And so they got an enormous amount of credibility through Dan's endorsement of the idea of the ENF. But I need to know how you get to that. I'm on mindweb.io, but I'm not seeing that uh, that that uh, uh, that diagram that you had. I want to see that diagram and click. Okay, hold paper. on, hold on. Let me send this to you real quick so I can get out of the screen. Okay. Okay, that's there, and then you're on mindweb.io. Uh, so I here. Let me just send you the link in the chat. Sure. If I can get to my chat, where's my stupid thing? Chat, show up. There you go. All right, okay, so if you go to that. That's messed up, man. I hit Fractally on MindWeb. It took me to the Fractally website. All right, good. Okay, I'm there. So like I could tell you, I probably ha have the uh, first six chief delegates in the second five. Is it five, I guess? Or is it five or six? Is it five? Oh, yeah, it's five, huh? Chief delegates, I probably know them all by heart. Like who they so, were um, or they are. So I know those people. Yeah, I can't open the thing by just clicking on it. Maybe I'll try another browser here. Really interesting. Zoom's uh, chat uh, stuff could afford to be updated. It's now all the money they're getting. Hey, look <laughs> at this one. Look at this one. Ami Hines. Very nice. I like it and understand. Perhaps someone can propose a smooth out alternative, which will be auto calculated and a smart contract. Perhaps the ENF or Dan Larimer can come up with such a formula. That's exactly what I was talking about. Perhaps an abrupt jump, especially the first one will excite people. Maybe it is better to have this list of phases laid out easier from a psychological point of view. Well done all around. Dude, Ami said that. Yeah, that's great. That that goes into this hive mind that you and I are talking about how everybody's very valuable because we've all said the same thing almost. Jesse put it out there. I mean, the only thing <coughs> I could come up with was I'm just happy there's something on paper. But there's only six pages, which is great. I really wish I could just print this and read it, but okay. Um, to gradually incentivize public goods work in all EOS relevant languages. So the, the, the brunt of this was the three native EOS languages is my was my takeaway. It's called three prime factor. This is all about language and the liquidity by just blending language pools of the same exact function like if it's whatever team they're the same function just two different language groups they should be helping each other with in this case uh with the very basic of liquidity uh since this is a whole liquidity system practically this it, it, is like a whole way to like have people be able to invest in in organizations that don't have much traction so how do you like make it so that market's not super wonky. Um, so Dan is like creating pools of tokens that are like, we're gonna have our own team token. I, I know you know this by now, but I'm gonna ask, did you know that? <laughs> yeah, I don't care, whatever, whatever you think. Okay, okay. So, so, you, you, so, so you, you, you do know that, that Fractal is gonna have team tokens, right? Sure. Okay, but not that interested in that aspect, eh? Well, no, I'm interested, but I'm not gonna, I'm interested in it all, but it's sort of like if it has it or doesn't has it, I'm still interested. Like, so if that's what's happening, like for sure I'm in, you know, it's like, I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is the heart of Je Jesse's proposal. Yeah, is, yeah, is, yeah. It's is, is, is actually trying to, try to bring formation to the tokenization model of Fractally. But, but he adds on based on language. So, so his recommendation is 
we needed to add a fundamental language aspect to the tokenization models that Fractal is, is birthing. So, um, I'm getting in there. So, I commented already on all of it. Okay. Okay. Well, what did you say? Uh, well, because Ami's, oh, Greg Lee's in here too. Oh, look. Oh, that was yesterday. Okay. Greg oh, okay. Lee says, I'd you. like to stay away from the thought process of prime and non prime fractals. The network we desire to create will grow as fractals mm -hmm. select other fractals with which to connect. The network effect is going to be far important for all. Some fractals will contribute to this network effect more than others. Fabric should be so binary. Yeah, I think it's a language. I think it's a semantic problem more than a philosophical one. Philo, philosophical one. Are you seeing these comments here? Um, I am now uh, yeah. from Gregory Wexler. Uh, um, no, uh, I'm looking but, at the comments on the paper, not uh, other comments. So no, I'm not seeing Eric's. Okay, so Greg Wexler just puts an absolute smackdown on creating a prime three language function on the embedded a native. So, and his point is, you know, language is great uh, as a primary barrier, but realize there's a whole shitload of crypto communities that have developed around EOS and so strongly nice Chinese English speaking cultures do stands out, but for crypto, let's continue to recognize there are many non-crypto public goods to be supported and or further developed and also- Where are you recognition. reading that? That's at the end of Greg Wexler's first comment. I didn't see that comment. Where is that comment? So, oh, well, it starts okay, out by more. saying- Oh, words... gosh, there's a whole bunch more. Sorry. Yeah, that's cool. This is- by the way, Greg's input is good, but it's 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 just a comment after all. No, no, no. I think he's right, though. I see what he's saying. Um, I agree with Dan, him, honestly. Well, Dan sure has emphasized the major language barrier so much sufficiently to so to say you cannot be a part of an English group if you don't speak English. No, no, no. I I think the problem is. I think the problem is favor it is a um, less than a starting point. Intent, I assume, to reach out eventually. So, all language is a threat. Thanks. More of a mar semantic marketing concern than one of the, the philosoph philosophical spirit. I don't know what I'm saying. You figure it out. Okay, since there's no international ISO standard of language names, oh, uh, would be easier to read if you change the symbol. Okay, yeah, yeah. For completeness, consider 
adding the Chinese community to them. And that was, oh my gosh. I was wondering if it was for value. <laughs> to call out these numbers. Oh, you did three out of four requirement. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, that was, I spoke to that. But they're both arbitrary. So I like putting numbers in. I'm different than, uh, than Greg. And uh, also, uh, Ami is in the hairs talking about that threshold's quite low. I kind of agree, but just getting something on paper still trumps that. One out of four. Because when, when, uh, when I found out it was one, I was like, one? I'm like, dude, I'm in. Yeah, I think we all did, okay? But I'm still just happy to have it on paper, okay? We can make it two at any time. Just get I mean, the fucking... The is, is if it's, it, it, that minimum matters less than uh, just the fact that... It, uh, um, what the payout is for the time you get what i'm saying it's like if you just make one meeting that one meeting starts out at 100 eos i'm going to go to all four meetings a month if it, if for that kind of incentive you know and of course i want to do something that helps me you know contribute towards the community if i'm going to like be you know i don't even know exactly how it all works i have no idea does this mean we're going to be like fractally meeting like we do in go fractally meetings, but with English speakers, I just see that part, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't really care. I'm, I'm just, somebody else figure it all out. Let's do it. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I, I really, and I, I, you and I are, are definitely a little different because, because I do care. I, I think that I want to see what the crowd comes up with in terms of how to play with these new incentivization models. And Jesse comes out swinging saying, um, you know, here's a, a roadmap for incentivizing early working groups. Um, and then he also says, um, it, it, it feels like it's, it's an apples and oranges subject, but he is, is the name of the paper is cross language prime native, you know, these are, these are native to the, to the fractally thing. that's going to scale to the millions of people. You know, you have like language based stricture immediately. Well, I'll say to boot, strap it sure make it native to get liquidity to the three major language groups i think that's fine but there should be a timeline or a temporary i should put that right put yeah that. right right there you go um
All right, I got mine. I got one of mine. Oh, all I want to make sure is that everyone knows I'm looking at this and <laughs> interacting. <laughs> and I'm having fun too, right? They said to have fun. Well, the way I have fun is by commenting as much things as I can that I feel the need to. <laughs> All right. So I got mine. Mine's right there at the top uh, for the three prime fact fractal. Um, I'm going to also put the money thing now. Um, Damn, that's far down, isn't it? Okay. So I didn't realize this was only six pages either. I thought it was 45 pages for some reason. <laughs> English Practice Council. And uh, fiscal, fiscal, the, 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 the argument between fiscal or pure uh, economics is a deep one. And I think it's valid on both sides. So I think you need a little bit of something and then back off to a pure crap wisdom of the crowd. Did you read mine? It's up at the top. I just mm -hmm. put it up there. It's real quick. Okay, thanks. Right and then. Whoa, did I just delete that? You just deleted it. What happened? Fuck. Did you accidentally click on something or did it just do that on the Yeah, own? that little arrow, the arrow, um, mark as resolved and hide discussion. I hit that button. <laughs> so uh, how do you get the recently oh, hidden? mark as resolved and hide discussion. What is this on? Google what? Google Docs. This okay. Jesse's doc. On uh, high discussion on. Okay. What? Comment history. Okay. Thank you. So, where's the fucking comment history? Open comment history. All right. Um, oh, I see. I'd be way down there, probably. Okay. Well, apparently, yeah. I got my face all over this thing. Huh? Well, I'm in a meeting. Okay. Huh. All right, it should be back. Is it back? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Please come back. No, I won't do that again. <laughs> it was a nice mess. It was a nice comment. Yeah. I saw it. It even did like the swipe across the screen and fade out right in front of me. Like, I <laughs> just yanked. <laughs> I don't see it. Yeah. Hey, you know, um, you want to hear something funny? Sure. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty crafty with how I uh, do things and how I try to like make the use of uh, free resources. So since I know I'm going to upload these videos to YouTube, if you ever wanted to like play some music in the background, 
what I do is I just open a browser window and I go to my uh, YouTube studio and I there's a library that allows you to allows you to play uh, music and I just play it. And so a lot of times when I'm working on the computer and I'm just like making my videos of me working and not may not even be talking, I'll play music back here because when I upload it to YouTube, it's already it's licensed. It's approved and licensed. It's not theft, you know. Yeah. If I want background music. So why is that funny? Just fill me in. It's because it's just well, a really crude makeshift way of like right. Well, a workaround. Is, well, because it's basically right now we're not broadcasting to YouTube. Um, and normally the way you would do this is if you were gonna use this audio to uh, use in YouTube. You would normally download the music and then put it into like a video editor, you know, and like assemble something. But the way I do it is I just play it straight through the browser, knowing that I can uh, that I'm having a Zoom recording. So it's actually being recorded in our Zoom session. Now, if I so when you send me that Zoom file into my Google Drive, say, say if I uploaded it to Facebook, now I'm in trouble because I'm using YouTube licensed move music on Facebook. But if I know I'm uploading it on YouTube, then I'm fine. See, uh, this happened like, for example, with uh, Brandon Lovejoy. One time he started playing music um, in a uh, meeting, a fireside chat, I think. And, he's, and he was playing it out of his Spotify. And I was like, uh-oh, because if you play certain things and it's, and it's not licensed properly, YouTube will detect it and you'll get a DMCA notice and it will shut down that video or it'll, or it'll strip the sound out of the background. I won't have that problem with any of these if I send them to YouTube. I got you. But it's just like, if you want music, it's, don't play, like don't go, don't go listening to things any which way because then you might get into a copyright violation with, with uploading to YouTube, that's all. I got you. Anyways, what else do you want to talk about? Um, this paper is interesting. Well, yeah, this was great, man. This was great. Uh, I'll tell you, this is exactly what I uh, what I uh, felt uh, would be a, a great thing to talk about uh, since that shit just went down yesterday. And uh, my my goal is to go there uh, next week. I want well, to hey, go there next. Week. Why don't we make a rant? Uh, we we could. Uh, what what would that be? What would it be? Um, okay, so you know you can get like 50 EOS or what is the award for the best brand of the week? I forget what it is. It's like 25 or 50 EOS. Um, so Nova Crypto and EOSBs have their MindWeb rant mind map contests where you earn EOS if you get the best brand. And maybe we can make a rant talking about the proposal. And, you know, just if you wanted to, I mean, that's just one, one way to get, see, it's, it's a difference between do you want to talk to select people under wraps or do you want to get the word out to the whole community and get visibility for it? Because that also then does stuff with Fractally, you know, because of like, if we say, hey, we think this is a benefit to Fractally. This is what our contribution is in addition to, because you know, if you think about it, the three prime fractals concept is based on language. We are the ETF, you know, we are the translation foundation. And this whole notion of like fractally being co-supportive of just not the fractally vision, but even the EOS and the ENF and the, the hodlers, you know what I'm saying? Like as a way for them to co-support the fractally vision, you know, it's sort of like, they might not agree with it, but you know, it just depends about the other five people in your group. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah uh, I don't know if we have a really strong thing to rant about, I think was is my uh, curiosity. Uh, is there a subject you think that we'd, we'd want to say? Uh, I'm about to put another comment here. Uh, well, I mean, the that... thing is, is we could, if it's a Zoom meeting, we could have many people ranting on on it as a zoom meeting like we could have our hey we want to increase the bandwidth we've identified a hot topic we feel like we need more community input so anyone that wants to join this discussion join 
you know, and then we're going to make a video and then we're going to translate it to all different languages. <laughs> you know, that's our rant video. I'm just suggesting uh, just an idea. All right. Oh, I'm down What's for it. What's that? Yeah, sure. I'm down for it, but I recommend we, uh, we do it in less than like 60 to 120 second rant. Because when I watch those rants on TV, all I want to hear someone rant about is like for 60 to 120 Well, you know what, if, we're gonna, if we want to do it that way, <laughs> what we should do is we should get like anyone who wants to say something, come out with just a one, two, three sentence blurb, soundbite. And then we send out specific campaign to we people we know who think we know who or I, I mean, we could probably... I might be able to pull this off with ClickUp too. I mean, maybe not this week, possibly, but what I'm thinking is if we could survey the community to figure out who has anything to say about. Well, I think that's us. Okay, so let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's open up the chat this week and put a fight from you or me or someone else if you want them to be a part of it in there and let's hammer down on it get the rant done publish and let's repeat let's do it again next time we get another thing that we want to say yeah we'll, think, we'll grow because you know the reason the reason why i'm saying this is that i really think this idea has enough merit to where it needs to be explored further and just like i said in the meeting time is of the essence we don't want to okay dally because okay, you opinion. want to uh, let, let's do a rant right now and, and do that that's a great that's a great thing to say you know, because it's sort of like what part of part of the whole struggle with this is like there's a there's a there's a desire to do quality production. You oh, know? You're, you're burning it up, man. I want to hear it. Hold up. Can I just stop recording and then restart and then still have the old yeah. recording? Yeah, I can. I, OK, I, I don't know. Right. I think so. I don't know either. So so I'm going to I'm going to stop recording. OK, and then I'm going to start and I want you to just say what you're what you just said. Ready? Because this is basically. This basically has is, is great. Uh, time is of the essence. He's put this shit out there. It's golden. Ready? I'm going to stop recording now. Boom. It is stop. Boom. Okay. So this whole thing with this uh, three prime fractals fractal proposal is it has enough merit and have enough potential to do something really wonderful for not only uh, fractally, but bringing the whole EOS and fractal communities together. It's a great idea, but the way I look at it is if we want this thing to work, we need as many people looking at it as possible to refine and improve it or give critique. And time is of the essence. So we don't want to sit here and um, not get feedback on it enough to push it forward and have you know people that have reservations that don't understand it we don't want to just uh uh wait longer any longer than it needs to take to make this thing happen so and, to me and this the timing is essential because there's so much yeah. happening in this community there's all this uh expectation with the enf transfer and there's some struggles that you know, the new Eden delegates meeting and just getting, you know, the transition through and the ENF and the working groups, this coalition, there's a lot of momentum happening. So now's a great time to not delay and figure out, can we push this thing through to completion or not? And if we do yeah. do that, we want the best possible product. We want the most well thought out product. We want Dan Larimer's real input you know, what does he honestly think? We want everyone who is intelligent and smarter than our pay grades input. We want the other communities and other chains if they have something to input it. And we don't want to wait till tomorrow or next month to do it. So this whole yeah, notion- Yeah, so it's basically of, uh, a perfect straw man. Right, you know, he's right. Put together, he's put together a, a concept that, uh, number one, uh, speaks to uh, uh, two major items, the liquidity piece and uh, the incentivization model across the for early time, the first year. It's great. It's done. Check that box. It's, it's great. And, and uh, number two, is, no, one more thing. Number, no, no, number two, that, that, uh, that, that, that liquidity piece, basing it in language, well, language uh, it speaks to the uh, late uh, phase of evolution of our, our species. It's one of the most central pieces to our composure. So if you're going to compartment out on a prime level, 
on a uh, native level of the fractally for the first year uh, to bootstrap it, choose language as the categorical piece, not interest in this subject, number one, number two, number three, number four. No, no, the common value being almost identical, but the language being different and, but, but it needing to bridge, well, tie it into that token model. It's a, it's a, it's a great proposal. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So any, any last, last bits or you want to, you want to tie it up on that? Well, yeah. Cause the thing is, is that um, one of the things that, you know, even Yves uh, mentioned this about just the need to take action. Um, and, you know, a lot of times with us in the media world, we want to have like, you know, I want better audio and we want a nice intro. We want a nice production. But in terms of just dealing with the issues, there's just a lot of raw information that needs to get out. So well, that's perfect. why I encourage us, Mark, just like, just, you know, don't think about it. Just do it. Let's record okay. live. It's like guerrilla tactics. And we have a community that sort of understands we're struggling. We're just getting up off our feet and things might be a little rough right now. But if it's the question of, the choice between either we're going to do it rough and get it done and get the information out, or we're going to think about it a little longer to do it better and not do anything. I got well, on that first. note. Can we send this rant up? Sure. Why not? All right. Sounds good to me. <laughs> I hope I don't delete these recordings. I hope they're all getting stored. They say in the cloud, I think they'll be stored. So we're back on casual. So, so a lot of times with coding, you really have to think through your design before you start coding. It's just like measure twice, cut once. You don't start building a house without architectural design drawings and the, you know, and like the the property already purchased and utilities laid out and whatever, you know. And so there's a, this sort of culture in EOS to approach everything as a coding project, you know, to where you like engineers and they're scoping and you know, just like Edgar was talking about the cost of implementing the bylaws and whatever and to making these changes to eat in or whatever. And so with where with, with marketing, you have a similar parallel. Okay. It's sort of like a good marketing person will like look at what your goals are and what your budget is and not just start doing something and then realize you're not going to get any return on this because you ran out of money. You know, it's sort of like they have to understand that context. But the the way I'm at right now is we don't really have time to figure out what the 20% is that gets us to 80%. We just need to spend the 1% that gets us to the 55% return. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah, real, I do. real low effort, uh, spontaneous, intuitive, get her done and move on. And all that can be cleaned up in the future with my future army of students that I will be building. Like you go back to these videos and clean up the mess or pick out the cool sound bites or go back and take the transcriptions and even, you know, like, uh, cause this whole notion of like, uh, how do we take the text that is auto transcribed through the video now and what can we do with it? There's a whole series of things I'm thinking that involve that process that I can't even begin to, you know, don't even want to go there yet, but believe me, I'm, I'm thinking about it. And what this involves now I'm seeing, at least with what I'll be doing is custom post types and content types in WordPress. Because essentially what I have to start um, like dealing with now is like part of what I'm gonna be doing is promoting other people and other things in the ecosystem. So there's the way I think about it is what is the, and most of these things are web addresses, okay? So what is, what is the thing I'm connecting to? Is it a hosted service? Is it a third-party service? Is it a self-hosted thing? And what is it? And how do I talk to it? So like, for example, what I mean by that is like uh, Facebook versus Twitter versus uh, Google or Gmail versus uh, EOS uh, community.org. Like, does it require authentication? Am I sharing data with it? Am I resharing posts to it? Um, am I taking some information off of it and sharing it in my website? Because basically I need to come up with a cookie cutter categorical way to where all this kind of sharing and resharing of content is done sensibly in a way that can be easily syndicated and reproduced for others. And that allows uh, sort of a, um, 
where the data doesn't necessarily reside on one site. Like the bits and pieces of data can be pulled up on different sites, but it, it's, it, it's like interchangeable. And so it's sort of like the, where I'm starting off with is I just want a good, a good index of, uh, are you looking at my screen? Can you see my screen right now? No, um, I'm only looking at, at your picture, but yeah, I can see your screen now that I uh, changed my screen. So I haven't even started work, working on this, but let me just real quickly show you what's going on here. <laughs> oh yeah, let me, show you, let me show you something else. You'll get a kick out of this. You'll get a kick out of this. This is where my mind's going. I haven't shown anyone this yet. Look at some of my categories here. It's ETF team on fractally, EOS mediation, EOSOS -OS playground. That's my uh, uh, abbreviation for open stage, EOS open stage. And there's a reason why these are EOS and that's EOS OS. I'll explain that later. EOS journeys, EOS index, EOS matchmakers, EOS ideas, EOS questions and answers. This is all part of the EOS open stage at Gmail account. This Gmail account I made with the intent of that I'm potentially wanting to surrender all of this to somebody else because I don't necessarily need or want to own this forever. And I could potentially roll this into like Eden or ENF or another team or someone else's management. And so that's why I separated that from my own personal Gmail. So basically what I'm doing over here is this has HubSpot integration and, um, Oh man, I don't even know exactly how, how far I want to get into explaining, but let me just show you this simple, simple thing is I don't have time to even work on this really. And I have a lot of web links and stuff that I want to post. And so what I'm doing is just like starting rough drafts just so I have the document started that I can go back to and fix later. And so like, for example, I have this one fractally on you it's this was right after i want to make a blog post on the meeting um that we just had that the three prime fractals meeting and so see how i have a link here to eden creators that was um what's his name's dancing joys thing that we that was actually displayed in the meeting but basically all i want to do is just like have a running blog. So EOS open stage under the idea of EOS journeys, I'm going to have a running blog of my journeys through EOS. So that journey could just be like me posting something in discord or me sharing something in telegram or me learning something new and sharing it with people. And it's a open, it's part of the open stage website where I'm doing everything with transparency. So now what I'm gonna do is ask other people in the EOS community if they want to have a lifestyle of open, of sharing an open experience of what EOS is to them, they can participate as an EOS journeys, you know, content producer, I guess, you know? And so I could either personally, see, here's the problem, is that basically, do I, make everyone else's YouTube channels or do they make their own? The whole idea behind what I'm imagining is we're not trying to create a centralized entity where everyone creates, you know, a dependency on somebody else, you know? And so like, I ideally it's sort of like, I'm the kind of mindset, like I want you to have control over your domain, your own website, your own YouTube channel, your own profile or whatever, you know, I don't want to be the one logging into yours and using it, but it gets sort of complicated and tricky when you start dealing with all these third party host services and how they authenticate. It gets very quagmire-ish, you know, because ultimately when it comes down to it, 
probably the best form of thing that gives you the most bang for the buck as a primary, if you had to choose one, is Google. Because of the fact that it integrates with Google is YouTube, is Google Tasks, is Google Calendars, is how you log into an Android in the Play Store and syncs nicely with Apple, you know? And so it's sort of like um, all this stuff is the kind of thing to where I'm trying to build the future here and I'm already running into like design, not design issues or challenges. I mean, I know how to do it, but it's like which way to do it and how to go about um, the organized sort of agreed upon licensing and um, automation of syndication. And so I have to sort of like start explaining what I'm doing as well as just start doing what I'm doing. And probably at some point I'll have like a finished website that actually will have like an about page and we'll have a right content. and I'll have my privacy agreements and all the SSL will be working and I'll have my basic categories. I'll have my, all my content types. And at that point it's gonna be filling the content. But see what I ultimately wanna build is something that I have 100% like control over ultimately when it, when it comes to making any decision over it. But as much as possible, I want the input of the community and I want it to be community driven with hopefully the idea and intent of maybe even rolling it into like an Eden Democratic driven web infrastructure, you know? But see, I can't do that because I just need to get a website working. You know, it's, it's just like the same thing with Fractally. You know, it's like, it's like the same reason we're using Mighty Networks. You know, we can't do it yet because they're still coding. You know, it's like the more complicated I try to make it at the immediate launch, the longer it's going to take to get it done. So at this point, I'm just using it to start post. Instead of bookmarking my links, I'm starting to build the posts. And so I just started this like yesterday or something. You know, I mean, excuse me. I sat the site built like a week ago, I think, but I just started putting content into it really yesterday. Oh, well, that's cool. Uh, yes, that centralization versus decentralization, uh, um, like bootstrapping phenomenon that you're describing is you maintain ownership until you're ready to integrate it into a platform or let it, let it go, integrate really the decentralized uh, control of the, of the all that work you've done as you, you let your baby go into the hands of a bunch of uh, bullshitters, you know, but if it's an Eden group, like practically people and stuff, you'll, you'll let it go. You'll well, let see, it the go. thing is, is my intent is I'll be able to divine an infrastructure that will be smart contract driven. I think I can do it. Like I bet basically there'll be a set of protocols of how it's just basically, I'm going to take out what I do manually and systematically and come up with something and you know like it's like this whole thing about ai it's like i want to be able to think in a series of rules of logic you know that's all based on principle and first principle but ultimately when it comes down to it can be all coded out and so i want to be able to have the ability to build it in that direction with this idea freely far enough to before so that other people can understand even what I'm doing and go, oh, I get it now. Because if I try to pitch it in a Pomelo, it's just too complicated. It doesn't make it, I don't even know how to explain it. I just need to do it. And the other part of it is, is I'd rather, I, I didn't want to apply for a Pomelo because I wanted the freedom of just being able to just change my mind, do something differently. And because the next Pomelo season is enough, far enough away, I can get a lot of stuff done by then and just get enough, enough of my own sort of, experience with working with it and then feedback from others to where I feel more confident about what exactly I'm doing. So now yeah. my Pomelo pitch is more like, I am going to be doing this, not I'm Yeah, thinking. yeah. Well, I can sense, I can sense what's going on with that. So uh, the, uh, it's hard to use words to describe it without it being off or off, off centered. The words I would choose to use is vacillate or going back and forth, trying to find a uh, stability. 
So, and it's not as simple as just scoping, say, I only want to do this or I only want to do that. And it's not as simple as saying, I don't want to be responsible for what I create. So careful, careful. So what we're trying, so what I want to say is this, you clearly are speaking to or step, stepping up uh, with what our species is facing right now with regards to letting the compartment in nature of the mind go bye-bye and to move into a space of, of radical abundance. And that does not involve control. <laughs> oh shit, wait, what? No, that doesn't involve almost any structure at all. You say, wait, what? Well, there is structure, but it's so fluid and the species has to speak to this or they're going will perish. <laughs> you see, that's how much energy is being released. And this is not just the species, this is the whole earth. It, it is all the, all the creatures. See, that's what people don't understand. The, the vast, um, the, uh, the, uh, the structure we're talking about is not uh, like our own little narrow myopia at all. There's actually other people, ego. <laughs> There's other creatures <laughs> besides the uh, very center individualistic focus that, that we've developed in the West. Uh, so uh, what, what I want to say is your vacillatory slash wanting to maintain some some sense of like, I want to say responsive. Uh oh, where's the sound? You're cutting you out. You're cutting out. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. You want to? Yeah. yeah. I want that elevator. That's a frequent uh, situation. I've just been all over the place. Anyways. Uh, so, so, so to say, it says all the right, uh, like, uh, buzzwords are there in your call it hesitancy or or trying to you're trying to like move into some place that of the unknown you know that's that's pretty badass so, so this so you're like this is okay, so, click up. Go ahead. i'm just screwing around right. with click up. let me just show you what i learned okay yeah. so the, this is the list view and i made one this is my workspace um and i made one uh task and, and I, this should actually be introduced, but I don't even know here, can I edit it? Introduce EOS open stage. And so what introduced EOS open stage means to me without any description is define what it is. And so what I did is these are subtasks and basically there's different categories because each post will have a category. So every post will be categorized of one of these things. And each category is based on a different content or organization. And so these tasks or these are, um, are themselves made up of, see how it says subtasks? Oh no, these are tasks, these are subtasks. And the subtasks are made up of like a to-do list. But basically um, you have all these capabilities to where you can have all these different kinds of views. And right now I don't have the uh, partly done, but you can actually like, if I wanted to say this is done, you can just drag it, you can just do it this way. And now it's in the complete column. And then you can assign tasks. It's a really, actually, if you go to ClickUp and you sign up for it, just watch some of the videos, man, it's badass. And you know, the cool thing is, is we could just have it sync with the notion too with Zapier. Yeah, and let's uh, get that rolling uh, whenever uh, it's it's easy, uh, and uh, and and we'll we'll play with both or uh, maybe okay. just yours. So here's the deal: is I talked to Eric about this for hours, honestly, and there's a lot of different ways to go about this. And what I was trying to figure out is how much do I actually need him involved. And how far can I get the group without him? Because he knows ClickUp. He's played with it quite a bit. And um, ClickUp has integration for Apple iOS. ClickUp has integration for Notion. ClickUp has integration for HubSpot. ClickUp has basically integration for everything. ClickUp can manage every known um, notification to mankind. 
Um, ClickUp has the ability to do whiteboards to sync with Zoom, Discord, you name it. ClickUp is ubiquitous, the most ubiquitous. And the free version pretty much will get us everything we we could, I mean, we will get us as far for a long time. Um, and, the, and the next level up is like five bucks a month per user. So it's a really good tool that not only we could use, but it might actually be something we want. We might want to look at to have as adoptants across the entire community, because it would give us a way to all sort of mesh with it, interacting in our organizing and task scheduling and calendaring and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, because uh, uh, right now uh, what's happening is uh, Translate Me is developing a proposal for Jesse, uh, and uh, that is uh, um, also includes a video for a, a demonstration. And uh, there's a third item going on right now. That's the so in the meantime, we're developing plans for um growing listen, that you want to increase the bandwidth okay you know what doug Wu says well what's restricting the bandwidth is not only the obstacle of language translation but it's the obstacle of what are the bits and pieces of vital information that need to be exchanged with each other and yeah how do that's we organize communication this that's the communication foundation so i scooped scoped it at translation not communication for that very reason i was like okay uh jesse's got the marketing that whole communication thing you're talking about is like it's like him i think if i was to just say it i'd say that's kind of his, his whole thing you said it actually you taught me that you said he needs to be creating content you know, and other things, and we are executing on that translation uh, technical solution. Uh, you know what I mean? Ag across varietal language groups. So it's very translation key. You know, at least that gives us that scope. You know what I mean? That gives us that starting point. I cannot believe how I, bad I am at doing two things at once. <laughs> I'm, I'm extremely, I'm suspiciously poor at doing this. Um, I don't, I wonder if the videos will play better here in Zoom, because uh, what did I try to play it? I want to show you a couple of these videos. I'm sure they have, they have to have. I haven't watched this one. Tell me if you can hear this one this time. All right. Welcome to your new home. Yeah, it's perfect. Now to get started, let's walk through your new experience. First I love this. Home and inbox have been combined into what is now just home. All functionality. Okay, noted. <laughs> The My Work section is where you can access what was originally called Inbox. In here, you can see all your tasks and reminders conveniently categorized into what's happening today, what's overdue, what's next, and what hasn't been scheduled yet. These groups can now be sorted by due date, priority, status, date created, or custom mode, which allows you to drag and drop to reorder tasks and reminders within a group in any order you want. In all sorting modes, you can now drag tasks and reminders to different groups. Drag tasks into your lineup to prioritize what to work on next. Drag tasks and reminders to different groups to reschedule reviews. And finally, drag tasks and reminders onto your calendar to schedule your day. Another amazing addition to your new home is mentions. Click here to see all your mentions that you have appeared in your notification. But wait, there's one more thing. With your new calendar and agenda, you can see your Google Calendar events in addition to showing any scheduled tasks or events. <coughs> and the 
If you're needing invites between Zoom or Google Hangout links, you can open them from directly within Zoom. Soon, you'll be able to create events faster than ever before. Enjoy your new home, and thanks for helping us make the world a better place. Now that oh, video cool. is just on the difference between the old, the the version one and version two. And so uh, if we go here, I bet you, like if we click to the YouTube channel, we can find some other ones. And uh, man, I I am just, I love this program. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if they have an affiliate sales thing, for sure, I'm all over it. I want a short one though. These are all long. They have Gantt charts, they have uh, time tracking. I mean, it's the whole nine yards and this, and it, it scales all the way up to like things you just, it's awesome. Let's see what this one looks like. Oh, so the first day that we signed up for monday.com, our department was already able to connect our classes. I feel like one of the most common questions people have about the app is what level of the She's cute. But they don't phrase that question. It's just more like, I work with clients. Should they be owners or project associates? Or That's, owners? No, this one's too detailed. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where the one is that I watched earlier. They must be on their website. Yeah, so anyways, I'm, I'm going to dig into it. I, if you want to share it with the group or uh, um, there's got to be some way that I can find the help docs. No, not that docs. How do I get out of the app and just go back? Where's my help? I'm lost. Ah, uh, Dorothy, click your heels three times. There it is. There we go. Resource center. Okay, I found the help. Now we're in trouble. Now I got the help. Um, yeah, these are all good. Oh, the advanced onboarding one. Yeah, I, oh yeah, I got some. I'm Paul, Mandy Guy Features are personal to you and can be easily accessed from your left hand menu. The home feature gives you a bird's eye view of everything going on. 
In here, you can see the capacity of your attention, the items you frequently engage with, and any areas that you can tag in that require your input. Your home, your style. Here, you'll be able to see your tasks broken out by what's on your plate right now and what's coming up. You can connect to your Google calendars here and watch them sync in real time. Or switch to your agenda to see exactly what you need to focus on today. For notifications, you can click on the bell icon in the left hand menu. Notifications are generated when any changes made to a task you're attached to. They're also automatically grouped by task for quick and easy organization. Once you've addressed a new notification, you can clear it. It's like cleaning your room and feels great every time. Clear notifications are all stored in the clear section for any reference down the line. Like all of ClickUp, you can customize this too and narrow down your results by only viewing notifications that are assigned to you or ones that you were mentioned in. And there you have it. You went from how do I do this to I think I have an idea now. The best way to apply all you just heard is to dive in and start using ClickUp. Welcome back. Now I'll be walking through what you can do with tasks for how you can organize them with things First up, tasks are the fundamental building block of ClickUp. They are the smarter, more tangible pieces of work that you can keep it as part of a larger project. If you're a simple task with ClickUp, there's a ton you can do. You can assign them to individuals or multiple team members, set statuses, label them by priority, and comment and upload files directly to the task so conversations never get lost. Dude, that was the EOS symbol almost. <laughs> ah, you'd love this one guy, I know. Was that Darren Larimer? Yeah, right? <laughs> you can embed these too. We can share these in web pages, but we're up to. This shit pretty badass. That's pretty cool. I love it though. It's all free. These should sync with Patrick too. The chat view, you can keep the conversation. Yeah, uh, it looks like it uh, will uh, sync with pretty much anything. What'd you say? I said, yes, it looks like it will sync with anything. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's an amazing product. And finally, form view gives you the ability to create custom forms. So you can streamline. Ah, this I like. Check this out. Organize and collect data. Okay, I know that was a 
Okay, they didn't share it, but uh, I don't know which one does, but when you do these forms, oh yeah, look at this, advanced onboarding. This is the one we gotta watch here. This is our, this could be the goal for us right here, buddy, onboarding. Well, that's the other half. Uh, the oh shit, this is, is four minutes long, fuck this. That's too long. Develop Developers and onboarding are the two. Oh, goals. Well, I don't want to watch this now, but I want to just show you. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to show you the. Okay, so here's beginner onboarding, and here's advanced onboarding. I'm definitely watching these two. Okay, but there's a, it's just a short video that I want to see if I can find for you on how the contact form works. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Features. Yeah, I think this should have it. Let's check this one out real quick. Because basically it turns your contacts and your leads automatically into your tasks. And you can assign them to people and Welcome organize. To the wonderful world of automations. You can think of automations as little robots and look after your tasks in the background by taking over repetitive actions and making sure nothing falls through the gaps. You can find the automate button with the robot face on the far upper right. Oh, this is not it, but I'm you just going to watch it anyways. This place, how many active automations you have on a specific list, folder, or space. When we click it, we can create a new automation, or we can create a simple shortcut that's commonly used, like always assigning a task for a specific person, or always adding watches. Let me show you what all this looks like. You'll notice this list has an automation that will trigger when a new task is created. When we make a new task in this list, another automation will trigger to assign the task to me and add some watches. Pretty cool, right? Let's see how making the automation looks in real time. Click Add Automation. Here we see a screen with two primary sections, each with robust options for what we can do with them. The win box is known as the trigger, or the specific thing that will start the automation. There are lots of triggers to start an automation, such as when the task is created or moved, when an assignee is changed, or simply setting the start and rebates and priorities for the task. Below it, we have the ability to add conditions, which are things that will stop the automation unless they're managed. We'll get into that in a moment. On the right-hand side, we have what we call the action, which is what will happen when the trigger is started. You can also use integrations as the action for your automation to create new issues on GitHub. If something changes in a task, send an SMS message when the status changes, or send an email when the task's due date arrives. If you want to create custom actions to interact with other platforms, you can set the action to call web and configure which data you want to send. Super easy to get the hang of. Okay, let's see this feature in action. We'll stick with the first options as they appear for this one. The status changes, then change assignees. This particular combo is super helpful for when you know you'll want a different assignee for each stage in your workflow. For example, when the status of this particular location changes to the concept status of this particular task, you may want to assign, say, Avi to that status because she's your concept lead. Let's keep the from section the same because, for whatever reason, you don't care what the status of this task was before it was changed to concept. Now let's go deeper and add a condition. Let's say this automation cannot go ahead if the priority is low or absent. Meaning Aubrey can't be bothered getting assigned to anything that's not immediately important. How nice it can be. So when this magical thing happens, the conditions are met, we want Aubrey to be added as an assignee because she's my go-to for concepts. You'll notice that we can also add more assignees or reassign an automation as triggered. But we can skip adding those in this case. Now let's test this baby out in the workspace. Locate a task of yours, then move its status to concept, and be amazed at how quickly Aubrey pops up as an assignee for this task, which is now officially in the concept phase. Remember, because that task is within our priority range, we can trigger results in the action, like magic. Within the automation's pop up window, we have a manage tab. This will allow us to make changes to any automations we collect, check if they're on, or turn them off. It's important to note that if they fail or if a custom field they rely on has been deleted, they'll be automatically turned off. In the same pop up window, you can edit them, delete them, or 
the second belief is that it's You also see a description field that can be added to each automation. This will give better visibility of which automation does what. Last thing here is the usage tab. Usage will count the number of actions or items in the event category and get them. Each plan has a different number of actions allowed in the range workspace per month, which we set on the first event. That about does it for pickup automations. The more you enlist, the more time you'll save. So don't sleep on these great little helpers. That's pretty snazzy. Still didn't have what I wanted to show you. It's all good. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's. Uh, I wonder uh, what Oscar would think about that. I think he'd 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 probably like it. And in fact, it might take a lot of workload off him. Oh, dude, I think it will speed up his workload a lot more. And it'll give yeah. him freedom to do it however he wants to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, and, and, and the other thing, too, is there's ways we can make embed pages. So we could just have like a live feed of what our team's up to and our progress. Yeah. So where any yeah. practically meeting, it's like just like real time. You know, it's like the second you update it on your phone, it pushes and syncs and all that shit, man. So Absolutely. think about that for demonstrating what value and contributions we've done. Like if we have a system that allows others to help demonstrate their contributions. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And right now uh, we're in transition. That uh, that document that I uh, published, uh, this, the spreadsheet is the most literal. Uh, when I looked at uh, the notion, uh, I, I didn't do a one-to-one. -one. I looked at all those boxes. I saw pre, post, and then completely a pre in progress, and then completely done. And I and there were huge boxes right now. The uh, sheet is a tiny little quick glance view. So I don't know how this is going to grow into a usable platform on Notion or on this uh, this item. Well, because the looking thing at, I think with, the thing I click up. See what would happen is if we just use Zapier to sync Notion with ClickUp and see how it looks in ClickUp without even modifying anything. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm curious uh, about. So I'm just gonna play with it more and see how it works. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and you know what a good idea would be just to mirror what uh what Oscar's doing and, and see which one's more obvious. Because <laughs> well, we'll what I'm saying two. is there's no mirroring necessary all we need to do is a, there's a free plugin called zapier and zapier better, will better. just basically sync notion with clickup so we yeah, can do so, both so with want. with with your synchronization piece you basically do what oscar is doing and we look at both sites as if they were mirrored do you see what i'm oh, saying yeah yeah well, yeah yeah but what i was saying is that it's I'm like, I don't want to do it that way because it just takes too long for me to input all the data. If I just do Zapier, it just syncs it and I don't even have to do type anything in. That's the way yeah, I look. Well, I hear you. I hear you. Well, uh, yeah, if, if you get that rolling in a way that we can look at all that shit at a glance, that's great. I think that's what Oscar's working toward. Yeah, actually, there's a bunch of, uh, this is interesting. Wonder, does it have a search on here? Anyways, yeah. Um, I just, I don't know. I was, I had, I was going to send it to the group, but I just wanted to play with it some more. But since you called me, I figured I'd show it to you. Yeah, yeah, cool. Anyways, what else? Anything else? Uh, no, I, I'll be start repeating myself if I say anything. But I'll, at the risk of repeating myself, I'll go ahead and say something. That is, I want uh this uh architecture for the bees to be successful that is uh, i believe i believe on on track to be successful uh that is uh the key uh we've we've created a uh, organization now that i want to grow into being uh decentralizable it, it it's it's not just yet but but it, it will be according to the way that i've grown the, that's the whole practically side of it. I can hand mm -hmm. this off to anybody. And I could probably do it. I, I couldn't you do it now. This thing with the bees, are you talking about with Translate Me specifically? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've, we've got to get that because that is, uh, 
it's just it there's not a better there's not a better scenario for success <laughs> so it's just a matter of like keeping it on course making sure it goes so um and uh, when's the uh, yeah. next meeting with ryan and uh jesse um well it's not scheduled uh so uh so the uh, the next event is uh what what i now feel like i'm repeating myself which is fine i don't mind because uh I'm uh, as unclear on some level as you are, so I'm speaking it out loud and clarifying. But basically, um, it what is what is what is clear to me, but not said, and that that I'm making a prime piece of what I'm saying is the like weight or meat and material in that operation is eclipses. I mean, getting a, getting the, the, the foundation together is, is, you could say as big, uh, but the real meat and potatoes right now of solutions is that. And, and, and it's working beautifully. So, um, so it's just a matter of like seeing it, walking it, watching it through, all the way through Pomelo three, three months. Uh, and that's, it's depending on the success of Pomelo three, uh, I, I think just Jesse alone will be fine, but Pomelo three, then, then we've got like, that stuff kind of like grows itself. We got the tree planted. Um, now the timing on, on the foundation is great because it, it ties up everything that is loose it provides a refuge for all the catch on all so we don't really have there's nothing that's super actionable like we're just less it all out say hey this is what who we are this is what we do that's that's the action is what we've been doing brainstorming uh uh getting to know each other uh like kind of listening to ourselves and what it is we want it's like kind of music listening to you think that out for yourself because it's neat to see you and your position with respect to a new organization like the community be awesome open eyes and go this is great i like it <laughs> you know because that's kind of what you're saying you know and uh that's the kind of vibe for the decentralized uh co-opetition a uh, co-operative new new model for human relation you know beyond hyper competitive and hyper predatory capitalism and um deceptive like, tactics deceptive deception uh the gas they, they, they just the voodoo is kind of gonna need to go and it's gonna mean you know hearts of men and the integration of the voodoo mind with the hearts of men and uh that's upon us and we're trying to rise up and, and to take good foot forward and, and legs but that oh. that is can only be done kind of like children you know so how do you become a, how do you be a very super like like effective person as a as a as a like a, a kid you know? <laughs> so it's like well uh we just stick with what we know and that is the principles and uh and mo keep moving um and so um so i i love the players that are involved in this jesse really warmed my heart in in his in his chair he was very vulnerable okay and in in this backyard you remember yesterday mm -hmm. and basically um he's like hey guys you know i have this really cool thing that i love <laughs> i mean it, it was obvious you know and, and he invited me to that like four days prior no availability on my end and then he says uh go go on seven minutes in and i said i'm in because i, I did two things at once put a fucking listener here in the ear and continued to do a very social event uh while oh, i listened while That's i listened hilarious. in yeah yeah <laughs> so, so so we were able to to speak to that uh that request of his because it really was something he wanted and i can see why now that i i sat into that you know it's it funny because uh he sent me the message or it was sent to the team i think right i don't remember but i remember getting a message on telegram and then I was like, oh, I got to go, you know, and um, I was on a phone call 
which I ended seven because, minutes in. Yeah, well, yeah, to join because I saw the message. Uh, so you joined seven minutes in also. I don't know when I joined. I just joined after the the um, message. Right? I got I got the buzz, and I was in about thirty seconds to one minute after I got the buzz. Okay, I was. I think I had to reboot. <laughs> So I was like a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if you were on uh, when I got on, but uh, but anyways, uh, yeah. My 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 point that I was going with on that one was uh, that uh, the 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 foundation and formation of that foundation uh, and the uh, the really the the engine, the meat potatoes that is the uh, technological solution and the users or the need. Uh, so Jesse's the users. Uh, I, I say uh, Patrick. Uh, I must begin to say Patrick uh, because he is doing some interesting stuff and he's building he's building something that I I appreciate and right now he's in the building stages of it. Um, I like an archive. I like a library. Okay. Uh, it's not as like awesome as the uh, on the ground patterns that Jesse has been running because he's very visible. They got the uh, translation thing kicking. They've got the uh, marketing thing kicking, the protection. He's, he's built something that's like uh, very kinetic and integrated with the people. So uh, Patrick has built something that's uh, like an archive that some people are starting to use right now. So they're both valid uh, as far as my own personal interest. Uh, Patrick has uh, linked in with the technology on my side and uh, served as a API um, user of the tech that we're wanting more folks to use uh, uh, as, as uh, 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 right now, just, just so we can create demonstrations in the EOS community. So Patrick's very valuable, just straight up on the ground for us, and uh, and I want to uh, and I want to foster and continue to move that forward. But that is very right now kind of sparse. For example, the API has been down for four days, so I don't want to waste time and speak to that almost at all until what do you got me through lately okay it's fixed okay, now we're asking okay happy hey wait that's that looks like it's growing and building so that's that's about my my input on that but i don't mind testing which we did about a month ago or three weeks ago uh, i i went uh, top to bottom through uh, patrick's uh, uh, production and i filled a report out about a page and they were all very happy and and we all saw what was going on so it's like i don't mind jumping in and testing the fuck out of something you know but but basically uh jesse jesse's and uh ryan's uh integration is uh is based on uh, communication right now of what ryan can give to jesse so that whole structure of like of a like a uh, definition of the system or a specification better is being genned up in the real. And so it's like, I want that thing to be within the 90% thumbs up realm and then send it. And, uh, and that's when the next meeting will, will be. That's to answer your question. Yeah. Well, I know he made the wireframe, but I didn't know uh, if it was ready to be displayed or whatever. Because uh, oh, okay. The thing I the thing I figure is, I have a pretty clear understanding. I think of what what Ryan intends to produce, and I'm just curious to see if uh, Jesse, um, uh, what Jesse's expectation is. For, for how the workflow will be is the same as what it is. And the way and, I imagine it working is uh, he's going to have some sort of, you know, some sort of thing, the translate meme dot market, so whatever that login thing is, right? 
So he has to build a new UI that uh, essentially accounts for the SRT uh, time stamps. And so the data that's within the, the timestamps themselves, the numbers don't change. It's just the content within the timestamps that needs to be translated from language to language, right? And so he, he wants, Jesse wants a way to edit it. And what my understanding is, or review it and possibly edit it. So my understanding is, is that he's gonna have something where he can look at a web screen where after it translates, the reviewer will see the English on one side, the translated one on the other, and if they like it, just perfectly fine. They can download that language into an SRT file and they go to YouTube and upload that SRT file to the language that it corresponds to. And when it comes to uh, the title and description, I guess he's probably gonna have something similar to that because the title and description, I mean, the only way you would really do it that way is you just co copy and paste it. You know, but if you're copying and paste it, pasting it, you know, a title and description is, uh, you know, such a short amount a, a B, an individual B could either translate it or just someone just copy and paste it into a online translator. If you're doing this manual, you know, clicking and uploading and downloading, you don't necessarily need to use a translate me based solution, but you could, you know, for the title and description. Now, I, my understanding is that's mainly just for the captions because I think Jesse right now could handle the title and descriptions on his own the captions are different because of how the time sequencing works. Does that make okay. sense? Okay, uh, yeah, uh, but uh, you got me on, Jesse will be providing SRT files to the original video content providers no, to no, say, no, hey. No, no, no. He won't be providing the original SRT. It's that after the, it's translated by Translate Me, in order to get it to the YouTube hosted video that's actually playing, you now have a translated version from Translated Me. How does it get from Translate Me Marketplace to the YouTube video? What I'm saying is you download it as an SRT file, then you log into YouTube, and then you upload it to YouTube. That, that finished translated file, not the original. Yeah, not yeah the original. and I, I wish to God I hadn't said the word original, but basically I meant exactly what you said. Jesse right, right. provides the post uh, SRT uh, translated sequence of 10 different languages, whatever, to the original video guy and says, hey, man, uh, put this as your SRTs, cross language SRTs, just do it by this, 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 and this in YouTube. And the guy goes, okay, great, thanks. Yeah, but see, here's what I'm trying to say is that all of a sudden now the job of like, okay, so the person the 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 finished SRT files, the job of someone uploading it to a YouTube channel, they don't even know how need to know how to uh, speak any any languages other than English. But it's the reviewers using the cloud-based thing per video per language that will be so the talent force, however it's being used, will need to shift to using this web interface essentially. Uh, uh, you know, uh, understand language. understand that, that that's understandable but the vi original video content creator is the ownership is on him his shoulders to uh to do the finishing but by uh by like attaching all the different language srt and that's a files. skill that's a skill okay. set that needs to be taught you know you don't know how to do it when you're born you know some no. people you may know how to do it. Some people may not, but it's just a little, it's just a little bit of clicking around. It's not hard, but it, it is something that you do have to know how to do and do it. <laughs> so, uh, hold on a second. So I can make some suggestions to Ryan possibly. Hold on just a second. Uh, let's see. I just, Uh, I want to show you this. I just put this in the chat. This is basically something that is a protocol. Is the Zoom chat? I just put it in a protocol that that Jesse okay. 
probably Ryan would probably finish off by creating that, that YouTube protocol. So it would be something that looked like something like this, or maybe it's line by line item, but it would be very easy to tell someone, here's the guide for yeah. uploading and you each can language. screenshots. You can make screenshots. Yes, yes, yes. A one, one page max. Yeah, I can, um, I can help with that if you guys need help with that. Sure, sure. That's, I think that's very doable, but, but I think we're in agreement that the ownership of the original video needs to go back into his account and apply all the SRTs. Um, yeah, because you don't want to, unless you want to get into fussing with, you know, taking, having access to the accounts, which we're trying to avoid at this point. Because the only way you really can do that is through an API, which is not attending to produce this round. Yeah, and the, you, someone brought up in the meeting that, uh, you know, I think it was Ryan that said, you know, keep in mind that the people that publish the video, they will have an interest, a vested interest in their quality of whatever and their reach overall so they can help finishing off the translations too but this yes. is the same concept they can basically yes. upload the srt videos and help out a little bit okay yes and now did you catch this the stuff i sent in about vicky uh no i don't believe uh, okay. so vicky oh. vicky vicky a, a lady named vicky no i keep talking about vicky and no one's catching vicky so i sent it to the bees let me find it and uh so I'm in the other group with the bees and the translation foundation. Where is the hell is it? I have so many dang groups. Drives me batty keeping up with all myself. I have to search for it. There's like at least a hundred probably. So so you saw the the uh, the layout then the bo the block the block diagram layout the functional diagram yeah. Well, just the words, yeah. I mean, not the book. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get the idea. I, I've, yeah. I've used the interface before, so I know it. Uh, so can you see my screen now? Am I still screen sharing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so this is what I said. So did you, hi, Jesse. We'll have first draft wireframe for you tomorrow to review for YouTube and EOSB's translation platform. That was today at 145. So is, he does have it ready for him tomorrow. Great, thanks. And then I wrote, that was quick. I found a good article on segmenting and subtitling, Ryan. Let me locate it for you. Thanks, Doug. Please share. You may want to try out Vicky's user contribution system. It may give you some ideas. Been exploring it. I can make a video for you if you want to, if you want. <laughs> I almost even it's like I weeks later I'll still fix it. Um, so, anyways, I sent them this, and this is interesting because I didn't. There's some things here that I learned that relate to one of the my little qualms. But this is a uh, the this is for Vicky's advice on segmenting. Segmenting differs in subtitling. Segmenting is where the breaks occur. Subtitling is the actually what is inside the the content and the language. And yeah, so, I did catch all that. Right, so that, okay, so you saw that. I, did, I didn't know you called it Vicky. No, oh, no, no, this thing, this thing. Let me show you this. Because you on. can't- One thing, one thing at a time. What's the Vicky thing? But you can see the you, segmentation you. if you like, okay. I'm going to do the yes. same screen right now. Okay, gotcha. So let me close out of here. Yeah, this is like so, segmentation, yeah. Okay, so this is what I, this is, this is Vicky. Okay, so now, what is Vicky first off? It's like Netflix for China. Um, I'm a, I watch, I watch Chinese movies on here. And um, I realized that what they do for language translation into English is they develop teams of translator based on their viewers. And so um, Vicky, doesn't even pay their translation teams, I don't think. They just reward them through recognition and through up uh, uh, rewards through Vicky rewards, I'll show you. So if you go to community up here, these are all mainly Asian. This, now I already created a thing, but let me log out so you can see, let me, let me do it this way. Let me go in through a private browsing window so it's as if you didn't have an account. So it'll show you what it, how it walks you through. 
becoming a community member. So, the, so basically these are the top contrib contributors. Start now, learn more, be part of the language revolution, let's learn more. Perks. See what they do, you get a free subscription to Vicky, awesome badge on profile page, official certificate from Vicky, opportunity to win quarterly prizes. And now the gold members get to qualify for end of year grand prize. I mean, it could be like a thousand EOS, a hundred EOS for the quarterly prizes, you know, like, because part of this thing is, is there's, if you get enough people that are looking at it, you want to have as much leverage over the masses, you know, and reward them as little as possible and give more people the opportunity than pay a lot of small people a lot of money that's slowing it down, you know, is the way I look at it. And so uh, if you go through the uh, get started, is this it? Oh, yeah. I can't go to that one because I'm not like, let's go here. All right. Well, anyways, let's go back to there's some more there's some more um, windows in between, but uh, I'm already logged in. So. Oops, that page doesn't work. I don't know what happened there. See, this is how they they manage their they manage it between segmenters and the language moderations, and then they have chief editors, translation editors, general editors, final editors. And I don't know if it needs to get this sophisticated, but all I'm saying is they're they're dealing with a lot of people and organizing them and giving them very low incentive, but getting pretty quality translations. And and thing is, is that this is Chinese, where there's a lot of weird kinds of things in Chinese. It's hard to translate to English, because of the, uh, the you know the sort of parable type aspect to the Chinese language. You, you, if you, a lot of translation turns into transliteration in English and the meaning is sort of lost. So, so there's sort of like a, uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call this? A lot of variety of liberty of op options of how someone would translate something into English. Like one way isn't necessarily as right or more right than another way, but you could have two different English translations and it would mean the equivalent because it's sort of like you can't really translate a language perfectly. But anyways, I just thought it was interesting. I, so I shared it with the group and I learned a lot of subtleties through learning, studying these guides. Like I think, I think of all the people that I've seen that are sharing information on the nuances with how the process flows when you're organizing lots of people and leveraging them, it seemed like they're the most sophisticated. So now I was like, man, would, would there be a way that we could develop our thing to where we could integrate with Vicky somehow? Like tokenize their rewarding, like and incentivize, like we could sponsor it, their translations, like add to their giveaways, EOS tokens, and then sort of pull, get pull into some of their translation power or something. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. Because probably right now, I, it really what it comes down to is these movies are generally Ch Chinese and Korean, strangely, is what I found out. And it's like, why is it that Chinese and Korea are our primary language fractals? And that's the same thing here. Is that something to do with how the media gets produced in China, I wonder? Hmm. Well, there's definitely a connection there. Yeah, I don't know uh, what yeah. it is. I can't figure it out. I haven't been able to figure it out. And it's good to be aware of because when we run into it again and then again, we're going to be like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> you know? Well, hey, man, I'm going to wrap it up. All right. Sounds good. Good talking to you, man. Uh, good talking to you, uh, as always. And uh, peace, bro. All right. We'll see ya.